Hi, my name's Nick Burnham and I'm here in sunny Torquay aboard a very nice Crownline 340 having a look at the best way to winterise your boat if you're not using it through the winter. And the first thing to consider is whether to leave the boat in or take it out. Personally, I'm a big fan of taking the boat out. If you are leaving the boat in, however, it's worth considering doubling up your lines and adding extra fenders because you've got a double whammy of worse weather through the winter and probably you'll be visiting the boat a bit less. The other thing to consider, whether you're leaving the boat in or taking it out, is having the engines serviced. It may seem a bit odd having the engine serviced in the autumn rather than the spring, but there's a couple of reasons for this. The first is it means you're leaving the boat with fresh oil in it, the antifreeze is fully up to strength, and it means that the engines are nicely prepared for the winter. It also means you're not fighting to try and organise the service when everybody else is, just before the boat goes back in the water in the spring. The other thing to think about is, on a smaller boat, whether you to take the batteries out and take them home. Obviously, if the boat's staying in the water, the batteries need to stay on because you need those for your automatic bilge pumps. But if the boat's coming out, if you can get the batteries out and take them home, it's quite a nice thing to do. If not, a lot of boat yards these days have shore spout, so it is possible to leave the boat on with a trickle charge to keep those in good condition. The water system on the boat is another thing that you need to prepare. Basically, in simple terms, it's simply a case of draining it down. You just turn the taps on and let the water run out. But there are a couple of elements that you need to consider. The first is your hot water calorifier. That will probably need draining, and most of them have a drain cock to allow you to do that. The other thing is your transom shower. It's an area that tends to trap water, and because it's outside, they do tend to freeze and crack very easily. So if you can take your shower head off, that's probably worth doing. Likewise, it's worth making sure that your water tank is empty and that your toilet is pumped out and drained down. You can actually put a little bit of fairy liquid or other washing up liquid through it just to keep the seals nice and moist. Um, and contrary to that, your fuel tank wants to be completely full. The less air you've got in there, the less chance there is of moisture forming and microbes forming the dreaded diesel bug. Now the final thing to think about with regards to mechanics is your seacocks. If you're leaving the boats in the water, it's well worth turning these off for a bit of peace of mind for both your toilet and your engine seacocks. However, do leave a note for yourself at the helm. The last thing you want to do is come down in the spring, start the engines, and forget you've turned those off. If you're taking the boat out of the water, well then, it's best to leave the seacocks on because they can trap a little bit of water and that can cause problems if it freezes. If you leave them on, then they can drain out. Now on the inside of the boat, it's all about these fellows, soft furnishings. Anything material, cushions, curtains, your bedding, your clothing, even the upholstery itself, if you can get it out, that's really good news. And in fact, the same goes for your copper upholstery. I think if you can remove your copper upholstery, that's worth doing. And if you can't, just tilt it up to let the air get around it. Now, the final thing to think about, especially if you are leaving your upholstery on board, is getting a little bit of warmth and dryness into the boat through the winter. A greenhouse heater on low will add a little bit of warmth. That's not a bad idea. But a dehumidifier will work well. There are two types of dehumidifier, however, there's a compressor type which works well in warm, humid conditions but doesn't work well at low temperatures, so what you want is the desiccant type, which will work better when the boat is colder inside. If you are using a dehumidifier, you need to consider drainage because most of them will drain into a little reservoir. If you're visiting the boat regularly, that's fine, you can empty that. If not, some have remote drain. And if you can then mount the humidifier onto a work surface by a sink and drain it into the sink, that of course will work well. But if you're leaving the boat afloat, bear in mind it can get stormy in the winter, make sure it's secured so that it's not going to fall over if the boat is rocking about excessively. Follow all these tips and hopefully the boat will look as good in the spring as it did when you laid it up.